Hey everyone, I'm Nate. And I'm Abby. We're the RC Sailors and we're at our airfield today with a freshly mowed takeoff landing strip there. And uh, we're gonna test the Wingsland M5 GPS drone. Before we get in the air, we're gonna take a closer look at everything that you get in the box, the drone itself, things like the transmitter, and then just a little later in this video, we're gonna test fly this for you. Now, the box itself actually did a very good job at containing everything and it having being packed in there very nicely and not shaking around or anything. So, pretty good job on the packaging. The drone comes in around $280 right now. Uh, originally, this was about $360 or so, so it's already dropped in price, but it is a little bit steep considering that it has a fixed pitch camera that is only 720p, but that is probably its biggest downfall, at least at first glance. It does have very nice brushless motors, independent ESC setup, uh, has very flexible arms, so it's supposed to be durable in a crash. We have four rubber grommets on all the sides there to help dampen vibrations for both probably the flight controller and the camera. And then this funny looking setup here is actually where the battery goes. And when the battery is connected, it looks a little cooler, though I don't really like this setup. Now, generally in this price point, like a DJI Spark or Mavic or something, well, Mavic would be a little more expensive, but regardless, you'll have proprietary batteries. And in this case, it is proprietary at 14.8 volts. 1850 milliamp hours now you're supposed to get a 17 minute flight time out of this but i don't think that's quite going to reach that but isn't that an xt30 connector this is an xt30 connector so in reality couldn't you just tape your battery on there or something? you could you could <laughs> yes i don't know how much the extra batteries are for this but it does come with the one now you can get this plugged in backwards it's kind of difficult to do it but it's possible so they have this marked for you as well you have to plug the battery in and then it clips in place but on top of that you have this little locking mechanism on the side now you're supposed to just push that down and the battery comes off and, and it does but I have no issues at all just pulling the battery off without that lever I don't think that lever really does much for me so I would be a little worried that this could come disconnected during the flight and just really make sure it's locked in. But when it is, it looks a lot cooler with the battery installed. Now there's a few other points here. I think the reason for this to be a bit more expensive, obviously we've got a GPS on board and we have our what I like to call sonar system on the bottom paired with the optical flow visual positioning. So when we're flying in wind, like we have now, we should be able to really stay rock solid. Similar features to a DJI Spark. Now the one thing that you're missing with something like this compared to the DJI Spark, and I'm only comparing it because they're in very similar price points, is the uh, camera quality. We have 720 here, the Spark has 1080, and a two axis gimbal on the Spark, and you're missing the size. So really, why would a person pay $280 for this? I don't know yet. Let's take a look at what else comes in the box. I do like the transmitter. It's very compact. We have uh, folding up antennas here, and you can angle them for whatever way you're flying. And then this is how it turns on. This does hold your phone. There's no on off switch or button, but when you unfold the handles, you see the lights turn on. So that's interesting, I do like that. It's an original design, at least to me, I've not seen this before. And then you can fit your phone here. Let's, let's test it with Abby's phone. So this is an iPhone 6S Plus with an OtterBox case, one of the biggest phones out there, and it definitely doesn't fit. Without the case, it would. So just, just as a size comparison for you guys. Uh, the gimbals feel really good. They definitely did not take any shortcuts on quality of the transmitter. I like how that feels a lot. You have the option, by the way, you connect your phone to this and uh, then it's connected to the drone. You can fly with this or you can opt out of the transmitter and just fly with your phone if you want to. Very quickly, we have two spare props, one clockwise, one counterclockwise. The way you charge the transmitter, it is rechargeable via micro USB. I think it plugs in, yeah, to the top here. 
and it, and it comes with the cord, very short, and then the charge cable itself. And uh, I found this very interesting. I don't know why they didn't do this on the drill. First of all, we got the European plug, so you need a simple $1 converter. But here is the outlet for the battery. And uh, you'll notice, remember, we have our very kind of annoying XT30 connector, but then we have this proprietary port here, very proprietary, to charge the battery. I kind of wonder why they didn't just use that same power outlet to, uh, to plug into the drone instead of going XT30. But uh, anyway, that's how you charge it. It charged for me in about 40 minutes or so, but it was probably a partial charge on the battery. Then we have instruction manuals here that don't really tell you a whole lot. So um, I, think, I think we're just gonna fly this and see Only one does. battery? Only one battery. Yeah. All right, we're ready for takeoff. Uh, found a little odd thing. The, in this case, the drone for us needed to be turned on first and then the transmitter. So that was weird. We couldn't get the app to function or anything the other way around. So both joysticks down and out. We'll start the motors. Or you can hit takeoff on the app. Yes, and I'm gonna. I'm actually gonna hit the takeoff button on the transmitter. Okay, you gotta hold it maybe. No such luck. <laughs> okay, let me try. Let me try this. Turn the motors off. Let's see if the auto takeoff button works. Doesn't seem to be. Let's try within the app. Okay, hit it in the app. And there we go. All auto. I haven't touched a thing. Now we can very clearly hear the wind and see the wind. See how much the drone is tilting? That is how a GPS drone with a visual positioning system and some sonar should work. It is just rock solid in this wind. And I'm, since it's tilted, that's also why you need a gimbal. Yes, so our video looks tilted quite a bit right now because of the wind. Look at that. But it's very usable and that's a good good quality it's just signal. It's the ground though right now. It is. So let's fly out and a bit higher. Sounds a little funny when I started moving the motors. And I've noticed some promotional videos and other other things on YouTube as well. And it does, the, the motors sound a little vibrate almost when you start flying around. So here we go. I think we're, I think we're doing just fine. Uh, as far as comfort, like as me, as far as me being comfortable the way it's flying, I feel very comfortable with uh, its ability to hold its own position and that sort of thing. Uh, there you go. Look at that. You Easy can't enough angle to, the camera at all. No, not manually, not uh, digitally through the app or anything. No, it does say we're already at 80% battery. Wow. So that's going down pretty quick. It's only like a minute of flight time. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, that's about right. We'll keep track of the time for you guys. Now, this drone is supposed to have a 500 meter range. That's about 546 yards. So uh, five football fields, five and a half football fields. And I think that's a third of a mile. I, I hope I'm right on that. I, I tried to look that up beforehand, but I won't be flying that far. I only fly as far as I can see the drone. And uh, that's really how far you're supposed to fly anything any remote controlled vehicle of any kind once you break line of sight you're uh, you're breaking some serious rules there all right so i still have really good video signal you see that abby and we're approaching the edge of our field yeah, the camera is just the ground it is and when we're flying forward that's what you're looking at so we're pretty far away let's turn back around there's our neighbors right there it's not very often we have the ability to fly that far away and still have a video signal. No. But at almost $300, we should be able to do what we're doing. We can see there are uh, piles of, I don't junk. know, junk. Yeah. <laughs> and there's our track to be for the ground vehicles. Maybe five years from now. Mm-hmm. Says we have 19 satellites. There's our building. Looking pretty good. Yeah. Uh, again, this is 720p, so you know, oh, there's, look at that. Now that looks like he's, you know, there's an airplane coming to the left. So just out of precaution, I'm going to come down, even though I'm probably only a hundred feet up or so. He's way higher oh, than I know, you. I know, but I still want to give way to him. Okay, so let's fly forward some. Our signal strength is great, and I'm very happy with the drone's ability to fly. It's very quick. Look at that go. Look at that go. 
Are there different modes? There are. There's a beginner's mode and uh, just non-beginner's mode. And that is within the app. Let's see what mode we're in right now. We just hit this little, I think it's in the gear. Beginner mode is on. Joystick sensitivity and flight speed will be limited. So let's turn that off. Can't be done during the flight. Okay, well let's... Try, try taking it out and return to home. All right, well, uh, let's go back out to where we were because I felt very comfortable with where we were. We'll do a return to home and then I'll take it out of beginner mode. Although beginner mode feels very fast, you know? I don't, I don't really want to fly a GPS drone much faster than that, but we will for the video. Well, I have to say it flies and performs extremely well. Uh, I'm very happy with its flight performance. Okay, let's hit home. Bottom right corner, yes. Now we're just letting the drone do its thing. It says on screen, now auto return to home. You know, I really like the app too. The layout of everything is very like, it's natural. It seems very in intuitive. I don't feel like I'm having to search everywhere to find things. Although it says our flight battery is at 50% now. Which we're is at like horrible. a four minute flight time, four that and a half. Awful. It's gonna land very close to us. Let's see, while it's flying, can I use my yaw rotation? No, I cannot. It's not letting me adjust. Straight uh, above us. Very windy day. It's, it's actually performing very well. Coming down very close to where it took off. Probably within, probably within five or 10 feet. Maybe not even that. Great job on yeah, that. That was really close to where very it's nice. like, like almost exactly where it took off. Very, very nice. Now let's take beginner mode off. Very quick and easy to do. I like that. Okay, we're gonna hit take off. Let's just do motors down and out on both joysticks and then throttle up. Okay, now we're out of beginner mode, so we should be able to fly much faster. That's some serious wind, guys, and it is doing a good job. It's probably 10 mile an hour gust right now. Easily, okay. Now we got some raindrops. Zip it around, here we go. So this is out of beginner mode. I can't personally tell a big difference at all. I can't tell that I'm going much faster. Maybe this way, maybe with the wind. But to me, I really couldn't feel much of a difference. So I don't know, I'd probably keep it in beginner mode for myself just to uh, keep, keep the controls a bit slower. Probably gonna extend our flight time. I like when I let off of the forward stick, it uh, stops. Pretty, pretty strong stop there. It doesn't keep drifting or anything. Well, before the flight battery is down, do you want to try this? Try any of the features or anything? Sure. Okay. You'll like the controller. Now, when you hit those little arrows on the right, you'll have some flight options, some like circle me type things. And I think headless mode is in there too. But maybe get a feel for the, see the little- P-O-I. Point of interest. Oh. Yeah. Force lock, home lock. Those are basically headless mode those two things but point of interest is going to be like circle me type of thing so you maybe want to test that but also just you know fly for fun yeah it is going to be like a circle yes me. see if that works it is very windy oops i lost you i knew you were going to fly out yeah. is it i thought it was facing away yeah, it was facing okay well it is facing away well why when i hit forward it's, you're lining up the shot for the point of interest, Abby. Okay. Okay. So it wants you to find your point of interest and then it's going to do its thing when you hit yes. Okay, okay, I got it okay. on. Okay. Yes. All right, let's see if it can do it. Now point of interest. Okay. And I have an option to exit. Do I need to do something? Maybe you have to give it direction, left or right. Try that. There it goes. Yeah, there you go. So you didn't really find the correct point of interest, but it's doing it. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I had to look away at Abby's phone there to see what was going on. I lost so it. I did have to get it some direction. Maybe, uh, maybe just stop doing that. Hit the little arrows. An exit. <clears throat> oh, I see. Nice. And just maybe fly. See what you think about just the drone itself, because you haven't had a chance to do that. Well, I don't like the camera on it. No, I don't either. The, the signal is really good. Yeah. Like, surprisingly good. No interference or cutoff or static or lag or anything. 
Sorry, I'm faced the wrong way. Nathan's not as good as a cameraman. It's chasing me as I chase him. Well, <laughs> I suppose you use the camera a little more and I use the general <laughs> fly a little more. It looks good in the air. The flight battery level is low. Please land in the aircraft as soon as possible. Okay, that was fast. So I'll just do a return to home again. I'm yeah. gonna stop filming. Okay. Is that okay. Yeah. Okay, and it should save to the micro SD card we right. put in there. Home. Yes. yes. Okay. So that's it's at thirty percent it went on there. Like that. So it's spun in a circle. And now it's flying backwards. Very interesting. We have a yellow bar across the top of the screen telling us that, hey, the battery's getting low. And I think when it hits 10%, that goes red. So here we are straight up again. Very windy, very windy. It's flying very well in the wind. Now it decided to come down. This is 100% it doing this return to home. Do you think that's weird that it comes in backwards? It is odd. I mean, but, it's fine, but yeah. it doesn't bother me. Man, that is accurate. Yes, it is. Wow. Hm. Impressive. All right, this drone definitely has some pros and cons. I've always wanted to have my own Wingsland drone, but the little folding arm drone that everybody wanted to get a couple years ago, a lot of people had issues with it. And when I saw the M5, I thought, well, that looks different enough and cool enough. I definitely want to grab one of these up. Now, Pros and cons, let's start at the top here. The price point, $280 currently. It could drop some, could go up some. Around $300, I do think that's a little steep for what you're getting. Obviously, the camera quality is the biggest con here. There's needs to at least be a 1080p camera, but we're dealing with 720p, which in today's standards for that price point should not exist. We see 4K cameras on tiny little toy grade drones. So I don't know why that couldn't be at least a 1080p camera. I feel like that'd be very easy for them to do and make it look like this whole thing is the camera, but really it's just that tiny little dot in the middle. So it's just a cheap little camera. Though, that did look really good and very functional on the app on Abby's phone. That was, that worked wonderfully. I was very impressed with how well the signal quality was. Although we only went to the end of our airfield. We did not test the range. I just pushed it to where I felt comfortable. It also needs a gimbal. Very much at that price point needs some type of image stabilization. Maybe put a 1080p camera on there instead of 720p and uh, put some digital image stabilization if you can't afford to put the physical gimbal on there uh, to Wingsland. Now, the best parts about this drone were how it flew. It flew extremely well. From the minute of takeoff, yeah, I was very impressed with how well it was just holding itself in the wind. The credit goes to the GPS paired with the uh, optical flow camera on the bottom and the little sonar devices. It really all worked very well paired together and while flying with the included transmitter, it felt really good. Uh, the feels like you're flying a good quality drone, but unfortunately the video quality doesn't keep up with the quality of everything else going on there and I don't know why they couldn't put just a little more thought into their camera and the quality because you know you've got the DJI Spark I keep referring to that or maybe even the Hubson H501S that comes in at 1080p and uh, it's significantly cheaper than this so I just don't know why they decided to go that route for this price point overall though we've got ourselves a really good GPS drone on our hands the only lacking thing really is that camera and they say it's got a 17 minute flight time, but it was more realistically eight or nine minutes, if that. If you can accept that, then you've got a decent drone on your hands. That's about the same flight time as the Spark, so I can't really complain too much about that. Overall, I'm pretty happy with this, but it's definitely missing some features. If you have this much money and you're shopping for this drone, I highly recommend checking out a couple of our options. We'll link them in the description box below because you're gonna get a little more bang for your buck. Now, if this would happen to drop down to about $200 even, or maybe right under that, maybe with some coupon codes or something, then you've got a great deal on your hands. We'll have this linked in the description box below along with other options that we would recommend. And if you see a card pop up throughout this video, one of those little pop-ups at the top of the screen, then that's something that we would recommend as well. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.